Xanax and drink a bunch of alcohol on my 23rd birthday. And I had friends at my apartment to drive me home but they would drive me to the gas station and they decided to stay at my apartment and hang out and party while I chose to go belligerent to the gas station. And I don't remember any of it. And apparently I fell down the stairs covered in blood and I lost my two front teeth. At 23, I know two front three teeth. Um, and then, so that was, you know, you would think after that, you'd be like, all right, calm down, Chris, but it only got worse. Um, I kept partying, I kept doing more drugs, worse drugs. Um, when I was around 25, I fell off my balcony. Um, I was at a Halloween party and the Halloween party, I was uh, getting into a fight with a friend. So I was like wanting to leave. So I didn't get in that fight with the friend. And I was drunk. I left my keys at my friend's house. So I lived on the second balcony, on the second floor. And I had to climb my balcony to, um, to get to, the, to my apartment. And my friend helped me up to my balcony. And when I got to the balcony, I swung my leg and I fell backwards and I broke my back. I fractured it and it took about a month to recover. It wasn't that serious. They said, but they did say I was lucky to not be paralyzed, which I thought was funny because, uh, you know, I'm paralyzed now. But I. Thanks, Chuck. I kept doing drugs and it got worse, you know, I, because I was in the hospital, they had needles in my arm and at that time I was doing, I was shooting up meth and it, it got bad. And so I continued to do that. And eventually a girl came into my life and would at this place I worked at, it was I was just a cook, and she was working in the front, and I loved her a lot. I quit doing drugs, I quit drinking, I got another job, and I was doing better in my life until eventually she she started leaving. She started to not want to be in my life job was I was losing it my my friends were leaving my life my family wasn't talking to me I just I start I relapsed I started drinking again so I thought that my life was over and I was I was just ready to give up so one night I decided well she wanted I wanted to hang out with her but she didn't want to and I drove to a work and I was drinking. And so, since she said no, I decided to get more drunk to <clears throat> drive home from her work. And instead of, instead of, you know, asking for an Uber or asking for somebody to come get me, I decided to drive home. And I remember it, it clearly, I was, crying and it was raining and I was going 90 miles per hour on the highway and my car I drove I was supposed to get off on the exit and I tried to take it anyways and my car flipped and turned and honestly I I will never forget that time I remember wanting to drive that car and die and I just wanted all the problems to go away and I thought it was the easy way out. But I ended up um, waking up. Well, I remember the car flipping. I remember being upside down. And then they they cut open my door. My legs just hanging and I'm like, the, 
I wonder if my car's okay while I'm just sitting there not able to move, knowing I'm paralyzed. But I end up in the hospital, and that was hell. It was hell. I died. I died in there. Um, I remember being in the hospital bed, and my mom coming in, and I have a tube the size of a vacuum cleaner, and the on a, the tube of a vacuum cleaner down my throat, and I have mittens on my hands, and she comes in and. She tells me she loves me, and I can't even say anything. I'm in pain. And it was something I did to myself. So I felt destroyed that I tried to kill myself over things that didn't matter. Um, and I constantly, and in the beginning it was hard. I'm not going to lie, knowing that I'm paralyzed. I'm never gonna walk again. They say it's hard to hear something like that. And one day it just hit me. Uh, well, actually, I was supposed to be going into. Um, I had nowhere to go. I had no home. My mom. I was going to. My mom wasn't allowing me to live there. My brother. I tried living there, and it was too hard. So they put me into the hospital to find a nursing home. At 29 years old, um, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to live in a nursing home. So I decided to, um, so then my friend, Tommy, who is actually here in the wheelchair, he came to the hospital. He hit me up on Facebook, funny story. He found me through my ex-girlfriend's Facebook. <laughs> uh, she was hot and tall. <laughs> didn't even friend request her, didn't even message her. Come on now. <laughs> didn't even message her. Hey. And then, that's, that's my point. Instead of, instead of hitting up her up, he saw my, me and wondered what was going on with me and saw I was in a wheelchair and reached out to me. And he's been in a wheelchair for 15 years. So he knows, he knows everything. He tells me everything and I don't listen. <laughs> He's my baby. I almost die too, way too many times. Um, but, you know, he, he moved me into his room and he moved on to his bus. And he showed me that you can live a life in a wheelchair and that, you know, you, if you take care of yourself and you do what's best for you and you don't worry about people that are going to bring you down um, that, and you exercise and you take care of the people around you and you love the people around you that love you um, that life will get amazing and you can create your own happiness it's up to you um, I, I'm truly grateful to be here I, at one point before my accident I wanted to die and now I want to live and I'm grateful to be alive and I'm happy and it's not easy I fight every day I have a battle left and right but I appreciate that I have a battle and there without without your downs there, there will be no ups you know so you got to appreciate the negative and you know so um, thank you for, for this opportunity I just wanted to just uh, thank everybody for listening. I appreciate it.